the last of the wild will soon be gone forever. If we are the most intellectual species that ever walked on planet Earth, how come we're destroying our only home? My name is Fredrik Streng, and I've climbed some of the tallest mountains around the world. And I witnessed firsthand the devastating human impacts on Mother Nature. In this program, I'm traveling with actor and environmentalist Christopher Hivier around New Zealand to learn how the indigenous Maori have managed to protect land. I'll also meet some other passionate characters. I've heard something that every second there's a football field of the wilderness that's left it's taken away, it's yeah. culturized, it's making to, 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 to make palm, palm oil or, yeah. or, 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 or logging or, 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 or making the cities larger. Um, that's... Uh, it's scary, eh? In recent years, something exceptional has happened here in New Zealand. 820 square miles of forests, lakes, a river was granted the same legal rights as a human. An extraordinary achievement. And these places were on the verge of collapsing due to overexploitation. The indigenous Maori consider these places tapu, meaning sacred. Maori worldview is that you know, we are related to everything around us. And in fact, as humans, we're the last born. And so therefore, all those other things are our elders. The trees are our elders, the insects are our elders, the mountains are our elders. And so we need to be respectful of our place in that family. I mean, we need to recognize that humans have a significant role to play, but we're not the center anymore. When you give a, a, a piece of land, or a mountain, or a river, uh, personhood, like, like human rights. What kind of rights are we talking about? That's an interesting question. The corporate form has been used in a variety of ways for many, many centuries in Anglo-New Zealand law. But what it means is the river is treated as a separate entity and will have, for example, standing to appear through its representatives in, for example, an environment court hearing. In New Zealand, we're a bit of a, um, you know, an ex sort of an experimental hub of looking at how can we bring an indigenous thinking about our relationship with the environment into our legal system. Because I think we've, we've all experienced in our traditional approach based on that concept that um, you know we're, we're in charge um, of nature has not worked because our environment is failing and we will you know we will go with it we are dependent on our environment and I think we forget that at times so the indigenous Maori started to protect land by giving them legal identities now there are also sacred places in Ecuador Bhutan Nepal can this be the start of a rewild revolution? A global movement towards recognizing the rights of nature? No, I, th I think that's revolutionary. And I think that could be one of the ways, because if you say that this part of the rainforest, it's, it's, it's ours yeah. and you're not allowed to touch it. If you do, you will get punished. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you can say that mountain or and, and just give like as a personhood give human rights to more places and, 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 and just say that this is this is off limits. Looking at really starting to bring some of these concepts into our mainstream um, environmental legislation and policy and I think that is what is fundamentally you know like you know has the potential to change the whole way we think and manage our environment and to me that's enormously exciting and then need I remind us that we're all indigenous to this planet we only get one and I think if we can draw from that indigenous approach uh, using science w w where we need to but maybe having the philosophical approach coming from an indigenous one we might start seeing better decisions we might stop seen such horrific things happening to our environment and of course to, to society as well. We can still save the last of the while, 
but there's no time to lose. Let's start spreading the word, push governments, legislators, and help organizations to start protecting land before the remaining wild is gone forever. Hopefully some, some uh, politicians are willing to do some, 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 some difficult stuff. Because, yeah, because change takes pain yeah. and sacrifice. True. But, but change is the best feeling ever. You know, to go from something to something else. That's development. And that, things that's... are happening. Yes. I mean, now we have uh, several entities that have received the legal personhood. We're standing here at a revolutionary time and the movement is ongoing. So, uh, Let's uh, pack our bags and continue the journey. Yeah. Uh, I think